Wireless data. It's what connects us to just about everything. And full power license spectrum is how it gets from point A to point B. Americans will use five times more 5G data by 2027. To make sure all Americans benefit from secure, reliable 5G networks, we need more full power license spectrum. Go to more5gspectrum.com to learn more. Every true crime podcast fan has a passion case or a case they just can't forget. But have you ever wondered what cases your favorite podcasters are the most passionate about? Slow Burn Media and journalist Bill Huffman presents an all-new podcast to explore that very question. My Passion Case will be a weekly interview show hosted by Bill Huffman and it will be released on Monday, January 13th. Each episode will feature a guest from some of the top true crime podcasts in the industry to discuss their passion case. Huffman speaks with the teams behind it, True Crime Garage, Generation Y, Criminology, Crawl Space, and many more. We will take a deep dive into the cases that have stayed with them and where those cases stand today. You're about to hear a trailer from My Passion Case. While listening, head over to Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your favorite podcasts and subscribe under the Who Killed feed. Don't forget, the first episode drops Monday, January 13th, 2020. This one stands out to me because I spoke with his father, I read his book, and I spent a good amount of time researching this case before I covered it. So it's um, set in pretty deep. The West Memphis 3 case really got my head turning. We're talking about the Silk Road website on the dark web. On the dark web. The Silk Road with Dread Pirate Roberts. So welcome to my passion case, and thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, finally you talk to the, the real hero of the true crime garage duo, the captain. You're always talking to Nick. So I would like to talk about the Long Island serial killer. Um, I'm really excited to talk about this because I am usually that person, you know, at the bar, people are talking about something, and I'm like, oh, did you guys know that there's a serial killer at large like down the street from us and people usually have no idea the case that i'm going to discuss today is a lesser known case this is a case from one of my old haunts one of my old neighborhoods and that's part of the reason why this became a passion case for me looking you know as an adult what case has completely captivated me and i have just dove on into, and that is the Lewis and Clark Valley serial killer. Well, the, the Golden State Killer case, as it's come to be known, started out locally in the Sacramento area in the, in the mid-70s as a series of unsolved rapes, and from there it progressed through different areas of California and went down to Southern California, and the uh, rapist became a full-fledged serial killer. Uh, we're going to be t discussing the uh, controversial conviction of Tommy Ziegler, who has been on death row in Florida for the past 43 years for committing four murders on his in his furniture store on Christmas Eve in 1975 in the town of Winter Garden, Florida. Uh, thanks a lot for joining me, guys. Uh, we got Tim and Lance here from Missing Maura Murray. And that, that becomes a bigger problem. So the chances of those being solved one day by that individual or other armchair detective individuals slim to none. They'll be solved through like DNA or, or some kind of testing. The, it also spurred my interest in true crime. They did a very uh, famous episode on Jack the Ripper, which is a case that I think still fascinates most true crime aficionados to this day. And I think that got me very interested in the subject of true crime. And also, and as I shared with you offline, uh, I live in suburban Cleveland now, but I grew up in uh, the southeast side of Cleveland, uh, around the 55th and Broadway area. And it just so happens one of the greatest unsolved cases in American history uh, had a definite connection to that area, and that's the Cleveland Torso Murders. I know a lot of people who, you know, have the impression that sex workers are, you know, out of it and, you know, they're druggies and blah, blah, blah. But like these, these women were very intuitive and very smart and very, you know, street savvy. And so to be able to make them feel comfortable when their job is to know in an instant who, who should I get in this car with or not and every day know that their lives are at risk, that, I think this person was certainly charming. 
or at least, you know, had a pretty good offer for them, that probably offering a lot of money. I guess that's why I love this story is because how far, I mean, there's all the black and white people of this world, and I'm not talking about race, I'm talking about people that are like, this is good, this is bad, you're good, you're bad, this is the law, this isn't the law, all that stuff, their moral compass is set. But for the rest of us, how far do you go? How far do you allow this acceptance of this website? When do you draw the line that it's gone too far? And I think it's great that it forces people to question their own moral compass. They see a hundred abandoned vehicles with alcohol in them, and then the person goes away, sobers up, and comes back, or goes to the hospital. It's, it's very, very common. If you, if you actually look at the police dispatch log, they, they, they kept all their eyes, as many eyes out, out there, as many eyes open that they had out there for her that night. And then they had to figure out, first of all, they had to figure out who she was, because the car wasn't registered in her name. And then they had to figure out how to contact her dad, and it takes time. And going back on it now, I'm 100% sure that all of the police involved would handle it differently. Rape itself is usually an underreported crime, and we know of 50 rape victims. I know he's a suspect in, in a few other ones, but I just think there's other people that never came forward for whatever reason, shame, guilt, um, um, whatever. I, I think there's other victims out there. I don't know that there's dozens more out there, but I, I'd be surprised if there's not more. And as far as we know, he killed 13 people. I think that number could be higher, too. And, and then you look at his home break-ins and burglaries. You know, those are in the hundreds. China is making 370% more 5G spectrum available than America. Tell Congress to restore FCC auction authority and allocate more 5G spectrum to make sure America leads the industries and innovations of the future. Go to more5gspectrum.com to learn more. You'll be able to download My Passion Case wherever you get your favorite podcasts, including Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, you name it, it will be there. And again, this will be a weekly show where I interview the top podcasters in the industry, and I've already spoken with people from Generation Y all the way to True Crime Garage, as well as Victimology and Crawl Space, just to name a few. So there's a lot of great things lined up for 2020, and I am looking forward to kicking this show off. So again, look for it on January 13th. That is a Monday. And again, my passion case will be available wherever you listen to your favorite shows. Hello out there! Yes, hello out there, everyone. I'm Hal Schwartz. And I'm Flynn McClain. Together we host None But the Brave, a podcast dedicated to the music and career of Bruce Springsteen. Bruce and E Street Band are on tour right now for the first time in six years, and we're taking a detailed look at what's happening on stage in our bi-weekly episodes. We've also been recently joined by some very exciting guests, including rock journalist Warren Zanes and Stephen Hyden, Backstreet's Magazine founder Charles Cross, and Barstool's Kirk Menahan. If you're a diehard Springsteen fan, this is the show for you. So please subscribe to Nimba the Brave on your favorite podcasting platform, and we hope to see you further on up the road. Thank you so much! We'll be seeing you! Are you tired of seeing your teen or young adult struggle on a path that clearly isn't the right fit? Is your teenager confused about which direction to take after high school? The future of work is changing rapidly. And our kids need to know all of the options available after high school so they're empowered to make the choice that is best for them. In each episode, we explore the latest trends that are shaping the opportunities of today and tomorrow. I'm your host, Betsy Jewell, and this is the High School Hamster Wheel Podcast.